21 years after the genocide in Rwanda, the country is stable and the economy is growing fast. But questions about its human rights record refuse to go away. My guest today here in Berlin is Rwanda's foreign minister, Louise Mushikiwabo. Does she care at all what the critics think? Louise Mushikiwabo, welcome to Conflict Zone. Thank you. I'm sure you're aware of the Ibrahim Index of African Governance. It's just published its 2015 report. It's the most comprehensive Africa-based survey of its kind. It's complimentary to you on the economy. It says your economy has grown very fast, but you get a bad report on human rights. Why is that in a country that has suffered as much as Rwanda has? Why don't you pay more attention to human rights? That's right. Well. Rwanda is, uh, if I can be presumptuous, a difficult country to measure uh, in um, some of the um, intangible parts of, 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 of governance. But I think uh, the best measurement of uh, Rwanda in terms of uh, rights and liberties and, and governance in general is the results on the ground. Um, it, it, it would not make sense uh, for a country coming from where Rwanda has come from to be where it is today uh, without um, the ownership and the input and the word of uh, the people who are governed. Yes, and I so understand that, but I mean, when you have an index like this, which is an authoritative document, it cites deteriorating performance on judicial independence, your rated poorly in the right subcategory, 39th on the continent. Uh, are you proud of this? Let me say that um, I ha we have our own views on in indices and uh, different reports. So you don't uh, accept reports. it? This is what you're no, It's not you that don't we don't it. accept it, uh, but uh, these, these uh, measurements uh, have their own purpose, and, and I think it's important to look at them uh, with a grain of salt uh, because the methodology matters, the context matters, and it's not always captured in these, uh, um, you know, more Ibrahim and, and other indices. But, but my but they're point not saying was anything that hasn't been said by other human rights groups or indeed by the U.S. State Department, which has made its concerns uh, clear to you on a number sure, of occasions. Sure, sure, but but just because somebody says something doesn't make it up absolutely right. Yeah, what but it's I'm a lot of people saying something, isn't it? There's a lot of people saying the same thing. But there know? are a lot of more people in Rwanda saying the opposite. So I think uh, my point here is uh, there is no absolute truth on uh, what is happening in terms of the uh, political growth and, and the governance system uh, in Rwanda, which is a very no, particular no absolute governance truth system. Maybe, Minister, but, but a lot of uh, the weight of a lot of evidence. Human Rights Watch, which has looked at political freedom in your country, says that opponents and critics inside and outside the country have been killed, attacked, or threatened. Do you recognize that? Dozens of people were reported forcibly disappeared in last year. Some reappeared in prison after prolonged incommunicado detention. Others remained victims of forced disappearances. Do you recognize that description of your country? Well, of course I don't. Uh, and I think anybody who knows and who's been uh, in Rwanda in the last two decades would, would agree with me. Uh, I also uh, don't recognize Human Rights Watch as, uh, as a measurement of uh, progress. What in about Rwanda. the State it's Department, the U.S. State Department? They don't, they don't know anything either. Well, it's not that they don't know anything, uh, but there is a narrative uh, that is created, and that narrative has to be fed. If you look at any of these reports, whether it's Human Rights Watch or the State Department, year in and year out, it's the same report. You could flip the pages and it looks like well, you could how say Rwanda was 10 years ago you is, is today. No, no, I don't and think so. And that's what they would say. I don't think They're so. They're talking I about reports of targeted killings, increasing number of reports of disappearances, harassment of civil society groups. It says this trend is reinforcing the wrong lessons for Rwanda, particularly that a country can continue to experience robust growth while repressing its citizens further. I tell you what, if you have the same report of a country that is growing in so many ways and positively, and it doesn't change, I, I think the problem is on the reporting side.
that said, um, Rwanda is a country. You're a very misunderstood country, country then, aren't you? Because we're quite so many people are saying. This. Absolutely, we're quite the misunderstood. The US is saying that the, the, the Commonwealth Human Rights Initiative. Um, human rights groups right across the board are saying this. Look, How can you be so misunderstood look, by so many people? Because we, we've made our choices and our choices are not the ones we are measured on. We are measured according to somebody else's standards. Um, but uh, my point was, if you look at Rwanda uh, reasonably, and you see what has been happening, including and beginning with the political system, we have our own system. So if you measure us against another system or your own views of rights and democracy and so forth, of course we're going They're to diverge. They're not measuring you against those systems. They're measuring you, for instance, against promises you made at the Universal Periodic Review at the United Nations in 2011. You promised to ensure that journalists aren't harassed or intimidated. You promised to conduct impartial investigations into harassment and intimidation. Promised to respond effectively to the request for information by the Human Rights Committee in 2009 regarding forced disappearances. And we're doing just that. Uh, we're coming up uh, in, in a few days, actually, in, a, in a, about uh, uh, two weeks uh, with our evaluation of the periodic review. So let's see and what the criticism Rwanda has promised is already to do and, and where Rwanda same. stands the uh, when the review are comes. The same, aren't we they? haven't been reevaluated yet, so let's not uh, make conclusions before we present well, the uh, conclusions, our the progress. latest from the State Department came in May this year. The periodic review is coming up. Yes, it's not in, there in, yet. In a, in a few days' time. So, so you let's know, not you know what's going to be said. That hasn't come up yet. You know what's going to point. be said because the criticisms aren't going to change overnight from May until November because it's in November you're going I'd to be reviewed again, isn't it? I'd say let's not uh, decide uh, how Rwanda is is doing in terms of its periodic review because the review is coming up. So let's that's that's part of the, the, but, the problem but, also but let's is look to decide ahead of time. Let's look at facts instead, shall we? The, the treatment of journalists, for instance. In April, the director of a Christian radio station, Amazing Grace, Cassien Ntamu Hanga, he was arrested for allegedly associating with an opposition party and a Hutu rebel group. He was given 25 years in jail. I think the key word in your question is allegedly. Mm -hmm. um, alleging is one thing and the reality of the situation is another. 25 uh, years in If you pick up jail. any of these cases, you would have to go through them very carefully because again, these cases are used in a way that would have to fit a certain um, uh, uh, narrative about Rwanda, which, you know, quite frankly, uh, we Rwandans have come to a point where we say we just advance with what we've decided to do as a nation. We keep improving. Rwanda is not a very different country from many other countries. Uh, there are problems everywhere, and we improve on those, and uh, we keep moving as a country. We, we, we cannot be caught up uh, in a cage of um, uh, definitions and, and, and grading by, by, by others. Stanley Gatera, for instance, editor of the independent news website Omusingi, also arrested in April on charges of attempted extortion. He was held only for six hours, he received death threats, and he had to flee the country. I don't think extortion is, 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 is something that uh, uh, is allowed just because you're a journalist. Uh, sometimes... Uh, but he was only uh, held for six so, hours. Sometimes uh, journalists uh, commit uh, crimes as well. So extortion, just because you're a journalist, doesn't mean you, you should be uh, engaged in extortion and get away If, if he had it. committed a crime, he would have been held for longer than six crimes hours. Crimes are committed he? everywhere. He would have been held for longer than six hours, Minister, wouldn't he? But he got death threats and so he was forced to leave the country. That's, that's you and him saying that. Um, when, when, when you say somebody has received death threats, meaning what? Specifics. Somebody threatened to kill him. Says who? Where is it? Where is it documented? Says Reporters Without Borders. Maybe that was but a you, way... But you, but you talked to them. <laughs> but you talked to them. Maybe you that was a way for the journalist to get away and, and be one of these many immigrants coming to Europe. What do you think is the, jo the job of uh, borders, um, Reporters Without Borders? To protect journalists. It, no, it to is... To look after it their is, rights. It is to produce precisely these kinds of reports. If they don't produce them... They don't want them, to produce critical reports. They would be out of business. That's how they, they make a living. They'd is love they to have be to, out of business and go find, somewhere else. I don't think so. I don't think they want to, to get rid of their jobs. So that, what I was saying is, whatever you read from these organizations, you have to be uh, critical and you have to be 
uh, looking at the situation that is being talked about. So concerned was the US by the situation in your country that last June, as you know, it made a special protest. As Stephen Feldstein of the State Department said, we expressed deep concern about the arrest and disappearance of dozens of Rwandan citizens and credible reports that individual journalists were being threatened and in some cases directly censored. You don't take that seriously either, do you? No, no, it's not a question of taking it seriously. It's a question of let's get a fair assessment of the situation. Do you know how many times we in Rwanda are concerned about what's happening in the US and Germany and other places? Sure, and you make we your points. Concerned. And you make your points. Uh, we are concerned, but we don't, we don't make it and a so definition. And so do the human rights organizations We don't make it a definition of the countries. These are problems that are everywhere. So They're telling you the that country, they're disappointed because on the one hand, your economy is growing and there's reason to be optimistic in that there's way. There's nothing wrong with But on with the human rights area, there's you're nothing disappointing wrong with disappointment. Badly. We don't need to agree on everything as countries. We don't have to agree on everything. Are you going after your political opponents? Um, if they mess up, yes. If they break the law in Rwanda, yes. Uh, and, outside, they are and, out, and outside Rwanda? Politicians are not above the law. If and they outside go Rwanda. by the law... Um, we don't, we don't uh, operate outside Rwanda. Uh, we are not responsible for law outside Rwanda. But uh, politicians, um, self-declared opponents and fugitives are not against the law, are not above the law. Last New Year's Day, J January 2014, mm. Colonel Patrick Karagay, mm. former head of Rwandan intelligence, was killed, was strangled in a hotel room in South Africa. Did your government kill him? No, we didn't, but uh, that's, not the, that's not the How point. How do you know? Because there's been an investigation, unless you know uh, something I don't know. I don't think uh, the Rwandan government has been found guilty of anything. You know, it's one of those many reports uh, that you mentioned earlier. But the point I'm, is... I'm asking you the question. The I'm not saying is, anybody pointed the finger at no, you. No, no, you're asking me saying. if the government of Rwanda yes. killed him. But, but just two weeks after, President Kagame spoke about consequences for those who betray Rwanda. Absolutely. What do you think? Uh, if you come after my country, I'll come after you. It, it, it doesn't mean anything. It's, it's the right of the president or any other leader to, to state but clearly that, was a threat, that they wasn't will it? protect that was no, a threat. Not. That was it's a threat. It's not, but what if Clearly it was? Clearly timed two weeks after one of your major former officials had been killed. Governments. In a brutal murder. Governments worldwide go after enemies of governments. They don't there go is and nothing, kill them. There's nothing very... Oh, you want me to give you examples? Sure. There are many governments that go after their enemies everywhere. And, uh, you, and you don't. What do you think happened to Bin Laden? And you don't. What do you think happened to Bin Laden? Was he, was he an official or was he a terrorist? Oh. <laughs> what was <laughs> this he? This man in South Africa was who's official? He's a fugitive. He left Rwanda many years ago. He betrayed his country. He came after his country, uh, funding and, and, and working with, uh, with the genocidal militia in the DRC. After, you don't call after, that an enemy? After Ka Karagea's murder, your defense minister said, if you choose to be a dog, you die like a dog. So he was celebrating this murder. Are you saying Rwandan officials should keep their mouths shut to please some other people? And are you saying it's not, it's not unseemly to celebrate a brutal murder? Rwandan officials have every right to make statements about their country and people who threaten their country. And to celebrate There's a brutal murder in those that. terms? That's you If you choose to, to be a it. dog, you die like that a dog. Is, I mean, th this is not a saying that came from Rwanda. That saying is not a Rwandan saying, but it's, it's the right of Rwandans who are in charge of protecting the country to be very clear about what happens when you try to destabilize the country. In 2014 also, three of your diplomats, as you know, were expelled from South Africa in connection with an armed raid on the Johannesburg home of another exiled Rwandan dissident, Kayumba Niamwasa. How many allegations are we going to go through? <laughs> well, there are, there are because, many allegations. Because, because you, South Africa's justice minister gave, sent you a, what he called a stern warning. He said our country will not be used as a springboard to do illegal activities. You know, um, Rwandan diplomats um, abide by the highest standards. But when countries have problems, sometimes diplomats become the casualties. So l let me just put it that way. South Africa didn't see it that way, did it? It was warning you directly. And there was and a warning out, back. And throwing and out three of your back. diplomats. There was a warning back from Rwanda that if you unfairly 
um, uh, kick out Rwandan diplomats, we can do the same. It's called reciprocity. What about in 2011 when British police warned two Rwandan exiles in the UK? They faced a credible threat to their life from the Rwandan government. It was a specific warning from the British police. The British police has never been wrong, in your opinion. Oh, are you saying they're wrong here? Absolutely. Absolutely. You, do you know the case? I know do the case know the very case? well. I, I, I discussed it in London with my counterpart. Do you know what the police Let letter said? Let me tell you said? something. I know the letter, I saw the letter, but do you understand how somebody would um, get hold of a supposed uh, murderer, criminal, on a bus, on public transport, and let them go back to the country where they came from, which is w what the case uh, was? This man who was supposedly going after some Rwandan uh, exiles in, in the UK was let go. So how does Rwanda then become guilty of anything? If you catch uh, a criminal, you let them go, how does that uh, make a case against the Rwanda? The letter said reliable intelligence states that the Rwandan government poses an imminent threat to your life. We can talk about reliable intelligence coming out of the UK and other countries for a long time. I'm saying police can't be wrong. Politics can get in the way of, of uh, police and other reports. I'm not uh, particularly convinced just because the police issued a letter. But it's a pattern, isn't it? In April 2011, If you want to make it a pattern, I could pick up something that happens here in Berlin every morning and I can show you a pattern. People get killed, but people disappear. But it's threat after threat after no, threat. No, it's, it's up to you if you want to put them in a package. I can pick up an issue on, on the street of any capital here in Europe and create a pattern. So it's just purely people misunderstanding your... Country. It's not just misunderstanding, it's wanting to portray the country a certain so way. So you which, don't accept any of these criticisms which are made in I a constructive don't. way. You, I you deny don't. everything. Absolutely don't. I am saying each case needs to be taken in the context of the politics of Rwanda and these countries and organizations and be looked at. It's not, it's not the truth of the Bible. It's, it's I'm not quoting the Bible. And these are serious allegations that are being made about your country, time and time again. Let's just agree that they remain allegations. When you adjudicate these, then we can sit and talk. Your government doesn't like being challenged, does it? Oh, we, we you don't like we being criticized. We unfortunately uh, are a government, and, and uh, there's always criticism in politics. Uh, what we dispute is that. Rwanda should be seen as a, a different species that uh, acts a certain way. We're a government like any other government. We, we deal with the same problems uh, as other governments do. And um, you don't and, like... And we want to be looked at fairly. We don't want to be, you know, boxed in a definition and be uh, portrayed as, as that and accept it. And you don't we like don't international justice it. much. You don't have much time for the international... International justice? International criminal court. You don't have much time for the international criminal court. I think you said... Uh, in a March 2013 interview, it's a political court and we have never believed in its jurisdiction. Sweeping statement. It's, 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 it's actually worse than that. Uh, you know, it, it, the, it, it, the International Criminal Court, from its own record of uh, the work uh, that has been done since uh, the Rome uh, Statute uh, was adopted, shows clearly, with no shadow of a doubt, that it is a court created for Africans, uh, and it is used mostly by Europe to uh, manipulate African politics. And you cannot do, tell me... Where does the ICC you chief prosecutor me, come from? Where is a white man? Where is, uh, where where is, is a white man convicted by this court from the moment it started? Are you telling me there are no crimes in, in, in parts where people have a lighter skin? We don't believe in that Minister, court. Should we That's look, why should we, we never, sh should we look at the we facts? We never wanted to, be, to belong to the, to the Rome Statute. We should we look at it. the facts? Look at all the African cases before the court. They were either referred by African countries themselves or referred by the Security Council with African approval. So what has Africa got to complain about? Come on. What I has Africa got to complain about? Africa has to complain about one thing. And that is that the manipulation of international justice by politically powerful countries and institutions is just a reality. By, by the chief, and, prosecutor, and the by the chief it, prosecutor who comes from the Gambia, Fatou Bensouda. What does that mean? 
She's African. You mean no African can serve the interests of other places other than Africa? Let's look at the cases. Before. No, no, I mean, tell me. No, no. Is, uh, is, it, is it unheard of I'm, that I'm, I'm African... Trying to, I'm trying to look at the facts. Yes. On Darfur, for instance, Democratic Republic of Congo, Benin, and Tanzania voted to refer Darfur to the ICC. On Libya, South Africa, Gabon, and Nigeria mm -hmm. voted to have the Security Council refer Libya to the ICC. Mm -hmm. Ivory Coast accepted the jurisdiction of the ICC. Kenya's President Kibaki and Prime Minister Odinga pledged support to the ICC prosecutor. Mali referred crimes on its own territory to the ICC, and you're saying that all this is anti-Africa, when well, here are African countries referring their cases directly to the now, International Criminal Court. You're not going to convince me that African countries they did this willingly, by the way. That African countries um, are sitting here with total independence to do what they want. We don't live in the same world. So, so uh, they were forced to refer their own cases to the International Criminal Court? Do you want me to give court? you cases where countries were trying to adhere to other organizations and they were told if you don't uh, adhere to the ICC, you will not get uh, into, say, the World Trade Organization? Come on. We, you and I know uh, the, the manipulation of international justice. It's, it's a fact. So all these and African countries gave in to Western pressure. Is this what you're telling no, me? No, I think let's this be... This is incredible, let's Minister. Be, let's this be, is incredible. Let's be serious here. I'll tell you what is credible. You are going to see how African countries are one by one going to get out of this court. If they were so happy, um, they would not stay. They would not be uh, getting out of uh, this court. You and I are sitting here. Just watch it. They will. You know. No, I, I, I agree with you. No, no, no. You. Let me I tell you something. You. When this they court will. started and the idea of this international uh, court that will serve all of us, it was supported. Who would not support justice? Who would not support international justice? But Do you want justice? The practice, the practice is that the lighter you are skinned, the lighter skin you are, the less guilty you are. Minister, With this, Minister uh, do, you, do, you, do you want justice or do you want impunity? Because we saw it last July at an African Union summit where you voted for the new African Court of mm -hmm. Justice mm -hmm. and Human Rights, and the first thing you did was to bar the, pro the court from prosecuting sitting African leaders. You don't want justice, you want impunity, don't you? For Come the on. big guys. You want them Come to be on. able to get away with anything, don't Come you? Come on. First of all, there are many non-African leaders uh, that enjoy some level of impunity. I won't get into names here, but uh, the court itself is problematic. And when the African Union said, please allow African heads of state to run their countries and complete their term, then if you have something, you can go after them. We were not listened to. Two million so, dead so in the DRC, 1.3 million in if Uganda. If this court is going to be serving the interests of some and not others, then let's not call it international. And you think, and you think impunity for all your leaders who Nobody. stay in office year after year is serving the interests of justice? What crime impunity? is there? Is there a crime to stay in office? Is that a crime under which court? I didn't say, but it is no, you, 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 want, you want impunity yeah, for them, that they can't be shifted impunity, because of international justice? Impunity ju has to justice? be linked to crime. What crime are you accusing Africans together of? They're ruling out any possibility of them being accused of any crime, because they can't be under the statute that you passed in July at an African Union summit last year. Africans don't believe in impunity. Let's be serious. Don't we don't they? believe in impunity. That's why we set up this African court that uh, many other actors are actually trying to sabotage. But we need to be serious about this. Which actually this cements court to function. impunity. It cements impunity Justice for the does not belong in one part of the world. Africa is very capable of dispensing uh, justice. We've just been very slow, that we have to admit, to get this court to function properly. But the idea that Africans are criminals and the rest of the, the world, you all are clean, is just a fantasy. Is President Kagame going to run for another term in 2017? You've I got hope so. President elections. I one, hope so. one more leader who can't bear to give up power? I don't like this uh, qualification of one more African leader. We are very different, all of us. Um, uh, Africa is not one country. Each country has its own situation. In the case of Rwanda, 
And uh, President Obama's warning, Africa's democratic progress is at risk from leaders who refuse to step aside when their term ends. Oh, President Obama or anybody else are free to say what they want. They're and free you don't to give think their, anything, their, you, you don't opinion. take any notice of it. It's not about taking notice, it's about the decision is by Rwandan. It's about the Rwandan people. They're the ones who know who should govern them and speak. Uh, that said, anybody can say what they want. They're free to express their opinion. And that's it. You just go on and on putting yourself forward but for election. Question for you this time. Do you actually believe that who governs Africans is a decision of foreign leaders? Is that your idea of democracy? Luis Mushikiwabo, it's not me who's been questioned. Thank you very much for being on Conflict Zone. It, it, was, <laughs> it was a pleasure. I Thank enjoyed you. it. Thank, Thank you. you.